Hello, namaste, assalamualaikum. Welcome to Crypto Rush. We're the latest Crypto News, and today I've got a very special guest to discuss with me the T20 World Cup, which has begun, and it's had some really interesting matches so far. But the actual matches, the you know, the Group A and Group B, uh, not those ones. The actual matches where you have India, Pakistan, South Africa, West Indies, Australia, England. Afghanistan and uh, one more team with that general England there we go that's the team I was talking about right. <laughs> they're going to play it starts on Saturday and thankfully I have DJ from Edge and Sledge's podcast a podcast that you really really do need to listen to if you are a fan of cricket or if you're a fan of India but mostly if you're a fan of cricket you're going to enjoy their content how are you doing DJ I'm really well man I like you I'm excited for the uh, T20 World Cup to kick off there's been some pretty exciting games Scotland has already beaten Bangladesh uh, we've just seen Ireland go past the Netherlands so yeah it's uh, it's all happening and as you say the uh, main show will start soon with the um, India clashing with uh, Pakistan this Sunday so I I'm sure neither of us can wait for that Yeah I I can't wait for that you know Mocha mocha chants are already going going off in my head so well let, 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 let's that that's a discussion for another time that's a discussion for another time so you you mentioned Bangladesh and Scotland and you know Ireland just uh, absolutely hammering Netherlands if you had to pick four teams what four teams would you say are going to qualify from uh, from your assessment so i think uh, the west indies the defending champions uh, remain probably favorites for this uh, time as well they've got people who specialize in the t20 game they go around the world uh, playing their trade people like chris gale people like um, um, bravo and those guys i mean they they've got a pretty uh, impressive squad right um england uh, they changed the entire way they played limited overs white ball cricket they were runners up last time around before carlos brathwaite happened so i think they would be the the second team uh before scotland beat bangladesh i would have tipped bangladesh to make these um, the last four and i think on the podcast that we recorded uh, on sunday before the game took place i actually said bangladesh is a dark horse for the whole thing having beaten australia and new zealand recently right at at home on spinning pitches so the pitch is fun they may have been a, a, a in with a shout but i expect then it's going to be india um just a powerhouse team players fresh off the ipl as well and then i think it's going to be new zealand because it's a world event and you can't keep these guys out of it it's either new zealand or pakistan and they're both sort of teams that you can't um write off at world events pakistan is uh, i know the cliche is that they're predictably unpredictable right so they could come and just win the whole thing easily um and new zealand overachieve at these things so the the last team for me the last spot for me is going to be a uh, sort of two contrasting teams new zealand very method- methodical in their approach to cricket with kane williamson as their as their skipper and on the other side you've got uh, pakistan who uh, blow hot and blow cold and when they blow hot they blow very very hot and when they blow cold they blow very very cold so to be honest i completely understand that If I were to ask you so I'm going to break down and ask you per each country per each team when I ask you one player to watch out for uh, in this T20 World Cup. So I'll start off with India, right? For India who is your player to watch out for? Ooh, it's a it's a good question. Um I think Virat Kohli. You can't go beyond him, right? He's got a point to prove. He's been man of the tournament in the last two T20 World Cups. You don't think of him as a T20 player but he's almost single-handedly carried India into the semi-finals the last time round and the finals back in 2014 which we lost uh, tragically to um, Sri Lanka which is getting stuck in Dhaka against Malinga and and, and co. Uh, so yeah I mean he's it's his last T20 assignment as captain he's already given up the RCB captaincy um So yeah it's going to be uh, King Kohli again he hasn't been in the best of form so he's he's, he's going to want to sign off in style and um, yeah uh, he's got his old uh, friend MS Dhoni in the dugout as well so uh, I think it's it's all system go hopefully hopefully from an Indian perspective he can do something good and get his first T20I century which is something I've been waiting for for many many years uh, we shift our focus on to New Zealand so New Zealand everyone knows that as you mentioned at the beginning as well they're the type of team that are methodical you you expect them to do well and they're the 
nice guys unless you're Pakistan obviously so who would you have to pick if you had to pick a player to watch out for for this T20 World Cup from New Zealand I think I can't actually look beyond Kyle Jameson at this point he's uh it was a big signing for them at um, at the IPL they didn't play in the second half of the IPL which I found a bit odd um yeah he's good bowler can bat hits a long ball I think Kyle Jameson it's uh that that's my call for him i mean I, i want him to do well actually i want him to see him back at the ipl for some reason uh, rcb just decided not to play him in the second half and they played they played garton at one point which i mean it's a bit of a strange decision but <laughs> i think playing a guy that high with that high in action in a t20 game he must be hard to score off and if i'm not wrong he does have the new zealand record for the best bowling figures in in a t20 game it's like six for five or something like that wow. so He is uh, you think of him in whites but he is a, he's a good T20 cricketer so James Smith for me. Fantastic. I I I didn't know about that fact so thank you for sharing that. Uh let's move along to Pakistan. So as you can tell I'm going group by group so uh from Pakistan who would be your uh player to watch out for? I want to say Babar Azam but then I'm I'm picking I've already picked Kohli right so uh, I'm going to try and stick with the bowlers. Um I think Shaheen Shah Afridi he's he's a fantastic talent he's a fantastic T20 bowler he's got those yorkers he's got bounces he's got pace he's got aggression i mean you've seen him in the PSL and what he can do in that i think he's he's brilliant so uh, Shaheen Shah Afridi for me if he bowls well pakistan will do well and he's the leader of the attack right yeah 100% so another afridi could bring you another world cup oh uh, let, let see th- those are brilliant words that i will frame on my wall another pretty another world cup i i wish i wish right last team with uh, within uh, this group is afghanistan a team that you you call bangladesh dark horse i think afghanistan is the dark horse of this world cup even though yes they're already in the super 12s but no one counts them in but they're playing in the uae they are very very good in terms of the spin side of things with the ball and the top order can absolutely smash it zazai got gurbaz etc even though they just got hammered by south africa but that's besides the point that's besides the point it's a warm up match right but who would you pick if you had to pick a player from afghanistan i think nabi the mohammed nabi is a uh, key for the afghanistan team he's experienced he's uh, he bowls he bats he hits a long ball i mean rashid is the obvious choice there but people will plan for rashid people probably will plan for mujib the zazais of the world and, uh, but i think Nabi is sort of, sort of flies under the radar a little bit and he's a he's a class cricketer and if it takes spin he's lethal right he knows exactly where to bowl it and hits a really really long ball and he's he sort of reached that level of experience where he can get Afghanistan across the line in a lot of games with the bat as well so I'm I'm expecting Nabi to really step up and as you said it's it's a close world cup anyone could beat anyone on any given day right these players are but they play t20 cricket it's a shorter format of the game um and so there's less chance to come back into a game and it takes one individual brilliant performance to uh, beat the other side so um yeah afghanistan are, are looking strong actually um, it's the it's the form of the game that they are best at let's put it that way right they like hitting the ball hard like bowling fast and they like spinning the ball and they feel like heroes as well so they could be could be their their tournament Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? It's this is the if Afghanistan wins it'll be a great Cinderella story considering what's happening there as well. So Yeah, what a story be, it would be. Yeah. It would be incredible. Yeah. Right, let let's move on to the next group and uh, let's start off with the team that I think has the most most match winners in any squad. I think West Indies have a player who can make them win from out of nowhere uh, with the bat with the ball. They're just outstanding. They the two times champions, right? And uh The, this squad doesn't usually gel this well if you know what i mean like they don't play together very often throughout the years unless it's a tournament then everyone comes back together they play and then despite it's more like uh, more like the football world cups and stuff where the where the players are away from the international side and then they come back and play uh, play the big tournament so who would be your player from west indies who i want to do well is actually um chris gale but i i don't know I think uh, Dre Ras 
they haven't actually got Narayan in the squad, which is, I mean, it's fascinating after what he did at the IPL, right? One of the most valuable players. Um, Narayan, um, in the absence of Narayan, I think Russell's all-round capability takes on more of a significance. He hits the ball miles. He can bowl 140, 145 clicks. Uh, it looked like he was getting back into fitness. Um, he hasn't made that much of an impact at the international level. He's done a lot of the IPL, and there was a point at which you could say he was an IPL greatest of all time contender. So he'll be looking to uh, roll back into form. And he, he was bowling well before he got injured, actually. He was he, taking three wickets for nine runs, I think, in one of the games against uh, um, RCB. I think he bowled A.B. de Villiers, right? Through, just went straight through him with the Yorker. So, um, yeah, uh, Dre Russ for me. Absolutely brilliant player, and I completely agree with you. In terms of IPL, he's definitely one of the best all-rounders I've seen in the IPL, no doubt about that, 100%. And one of the biggest hitters as well. Uh, if we move along to England. So England, for me, I think England's actually got an interesting squad in the sense they've, they've, they've pretty much stuck to their guns since 2015-2016. You have big hitters, you have one kind of anchor, and then everyone else bats till like number nine, and everyone can come in and get, get your runs. And then you have a spinner or, you know, a couple of spinners in Moin Ali and Al Al Rashid. So I think their squad is pretty settled. I just don't know how they're going to adapt considering Owen Morgan's horrendous form at the moment. So uh, if you had to pick a player from England, I hope it's not Owen Morgan, who would be the player to watch out for for England? So again, I'm going to go with a bowler here because uh, batsmen win you matches, but bowlers win you tournaments. I'm going to go with uh, Tymel Mills, who's one of the... We've actually had him on the Edges and Sledges Cricket Podcast before. He's uh, been kind enough to give us some time and we've spoken to him. Um, he's come back from injury. He had a brilliant 100. He's made it back into the England setup, and he's he's a death bowler, right? And he's, he's not the conventional... A dead bowler that keeps going for Yorkers and stuff. He bowls short, he bowls back to the length, he bowls slower balls. And if he can bowl well again, much like Shaheen Shah Afridi, I think he will become the leader of that attack. Because it does, they, yeah, they have Chris Wilkes, they've got da uh, David Willey, they've got uh, other bowlers who can, who, and Chris Jordan, who's a fantastic dead bowler. But if you can have Chris Jordan and Tamil Mills bowling in tandem, it's going to be some uh, uh, death. Uh, death overs that he can put out there. So I'd expect uh, him to be key for for England. And of course, their batting is just, it's insane. And if it comes off and then you have these two guys defending the rounds, it's, it's going to be tough. So uh, time with Mills for England for me. Uh, the thing with Mills is he was probably not going to be considered if Jofra Archer was fit, which is which is a really sad story because he has been amazing since what, 2016, 2017. He's, he's been one of the best death bowlers in the 100 in T20 formats all around the world. I think he's number four or something like that with economy and wicket taking and stuff. But yeah, it's. I'm glad he's in the squad and I'm glad England's in the other group, just saying, right? Because <laughs> it would have been tough. Uh, let's talk about a team that, you know, uh, has not had the best time of it in T20s over the past two, three series they've played it is Australia. With well, something you don't really hear about Australia that, oh, not, not in a good nick before a tournament begins because they usually have their lineup quite settled down. Uh, if you had to pick a player from Australia, who would that be? This is really tough, actually, because I'm trying to think of Australians that are in good form in, in the in the T20 game. Like Warner was chucked out of uh, Sunrisers Hyderabad. Stoinis was injured, came back in and played a pretty bad innings, actually, to almost cost Delhi Capitals that match against the KKR, right? So, uh, Finch, not part of the IPL this time around. Uh, I'd say... Warner, may, I, I don't really have a strong uh, feeling about it. I, I don't think Australia, you would have heard, I, I don't think Australia are going to make the top four. Yeah. I just don't think they're good at T T20 cricket. They don't give it enough attention. They're more obsessed with the Ashes and the ODI World Cup. So uh, I, I think Warner, uh, if he can get into form, Finch, Smith, the others can bat around him. Uh, they're batting. Marcus Stoinis can, can finish for them as well. Maxi. Maybe, actually, maybe maybe it's Maxi who's key, uh, having been in pretty good form with the bat and with the ball. But Warner needs to hit form for them. So I'm going to pick Warner as the, as the key for, for Australia. Fair point. I think a lot of people have said David Warner because he's been in such bad form that you're just expecting him to blow up somewhere, right? He's going to get runs somewhere. He hasn't scored runs in the IPL. It's got to be this. 
this tournament because he's uh, getting uh, into the late 30s era where he might actually be considered dropped fr- from their side. But yeah, definitely. I think David Warner is key for them. And then, you know, Glenn Maxwell, as you c- correctly pointed out. If we talk about South Africa, South Africa is a team where there's obviously controversy. And this is probably the weakest squad I've seen South Africa go in with in a, in a T20 World Cup in quite some time. But they've got some players to kind of, you know, write home about. You've got uh, Russell Van Dusen, you've got David Miller, you've got in the bowling, you've got Robata, you've got Norkia, right? So you got Tabri Shamsi, the number uh, one T20 bowler as well. So if you had to pick someone from South Africa, who would that be? I don't know if that will proceed pretty good. He's not in the squad, though. <laughs> <laughs> After scoring 86 in the, in the IPL, finally he doesn't find a spot. So, um, yeah. Um, I think Nokia. Nokia has been on fire. He's, he knows the pitches. He knows the conditions. He's been out there. He's bowled his heart out for the Delhi Capitals in the IPL. And he's good, but I don't see these guys making it. They've dropped Tahir, another class leg spinner. Um, another Chennai boy, actually. Yeah, Chennai IPL boy. Um, but, I mean, their batting looks... It looks pretty shocking, actually. I mean, without Faf, without AB... Uh, both of whom are still active. I can't see them. I mean, Temba Bavuma is the captain. It's just, I mean, it's a bit ridiculous, frankly. But anyway, um, it's fine. Um, <laughs> I, I understand the... I'm picking Nokia. Oh, I understand the pain of watching South Africa and thinking they should be so much better than this. It's it, it, it's it's outrageous. Um, yeah. <laughs> right. Um, let Last last couple of questions, I promise, right? If you had to pick a winner of this year's T20 World Cup, right? Obviously, you're going to say India. So let's think of another team that you could potentially consider. Who would be the other team that you might consider as a winner of this T20 World Cup? It's it's super open, right? That That's the point. And I... I think the West Indies are very, very strong. I think England are very strong. I'd love to see Afghanistan do well. Um, because they're exciting. Um, I'd like to see Pakistan do well because they're exciting as well on their on their good days. Um, Bangladesh again, super uh, on on a good day. Who's going to win? Who's going to win? Uh, I think it might be. I hate to say this. It might be England. They might hold both the trophies at once. Uh, that would be horrendous. But uh, I think they, they're quite strong. And they, they've they paid attention to the white ball format, right? To the detriment of their red ball cricket almost, in a way. Um, but, they, but they haven't got Ben Stokes. Maybe it's a blessing in disguise for them because they then need to work out where to fit him in because he's not the ideal D20 cricketer in some ways. Um but they've got Butler, they've got Roy, they've got Morgan if he hits form, they've got they've got a lot of firepower. Besto, Jason Roy, Livingston. Oh, we haven't even talked about Livingston. And he just, I mean, he's an incredible hitter of the cricket board. So I'm going to pick England to outgun possibly the West Indies in the finals. I think the Indians and the other teams. I wish they. I wish them well, of course. I mean, we, we are an Indian cricket podcast. So I want India to win. Um, fingers crossed they do. But if they don't, then uh, England, I think, might pick up the trophy. Uh, Fair enough. Let's see. Yeah, th- there's the thing. It's a. It's a really tough, com- uh, tough tournament to call. So every time I ask any guest, they, I always have to pause and they're like, "Why are you asking me this? It's so difficult." This, yeah. It's so difficult to play. But it's one. also it's it's also a T20 tournament. We've just seen Chennai pick up the IPL. Yeah. You show me one person who would have told you Chennai is going to win the IPL in April this year. <laughs> Only and Chennai. It's fans. unpredictable. It's yeah. unpredictable, and um, I mean it could be well be Afghanistan picking up the trophy for all we know, because you can't tell if you get on a roll, you have a couple of good games, you hold a nerve on a pressure moment. And yeah, for everyone watching, please do go over to the Edges and Sledges podcast. Check out One Tip, One Hand on Twitter, on Instagram. Like, Just type Edges and Sledges podcast. You'll find all of their details. I'll leave some of the links in the description below as well. Again, DJ, really appreciate it. I know you're in India. I know you're away 
right? Enjoying yourself and you took the time out. So I really appreciate it. Oh, and it's, yeah. it's great to chat with you always, man. No, of course. Much, much appreciated. And until next time, everyone, take care, stay safe. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye, guys.